Safety Procedures in Farm Operation TLE 7, Quarter 2, Week 2, Lesson 3 Learning Competencies 1. Discuss safety procedures in farm operations and 2. Discuss hazards and risks in farm operations So students, please look for the given words on the board. From these photos, what can to say about the pictures? On our yesterday's lesson, we studied about the different careers and job opportunities related to agriculture. Based on the photos that were presented a while ago, what do you think will be our lesson focus for today? But first, we watch the reenactment of farm accident. Stop on that there, William. Yeah, stop on that second point. Brendan, have you seen Colin anywhere? I'm trying to get through to him on that. I sent him around there to get the straps. Yeah, the lads are up there. Come on, William. We're not going to bother with the straps. Go on, go on. Come on, where is he? Tell me where he is. Oh, God, I'm Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, come on. Oh, my God. Oh, oh get, get an ambulance. Get an ambulance. He's not moving at all. Oh, God. Come on. Yeah, there's actually been an accident. Clear and fell apart. Yeah. Now, what is the occupational safety in the farm? Occupational safety when in the farm, is safety practices set by farm owners that involves production and work process of farm workers. Farmers should always take extra measures to ensure their safety while working in the farm. Now what is hazards and risk in the farm? Hazards and risk in the farm, is that farmers are exposed to a lot of risk, which can lead to major accidents or injuries. Risk is the possibility of a hazard to exist. It may cause injury or health problems. It is important that workers are properly trained and properly guided by the management. Now let us talk about the types of hazards. But first what is a hazard? Hazard can potentially harm or injure workers. In any workplace, hazard exists. Over fatigue, improper posture while harvesting the crops, and using unguarded machineries are some of the common hazards. So the following are the types of hazards. 1. Physical hazard. It includes weak platform, slippery stairs or floorings, falling objects, excessively loud music, prolonged vibration, poor ventilation, extreme temperatures, and poor air quality. 2. Mechanical hazards. It poses a significant risk of injury or death from moving parts, machinery, or equipment. Proper safety measures and regular maintenance can mitigate these hazards and ensure a safer working environment. Number 3. Chemical hazard. Chemical hazards are typical of hazardous chemicals that can cause fire and explosion that came from pesticides, cleaning agents, acids, and poisons. Exposure to certain chemicals or improper handling and use of those chemicals can cause acute or long-term adverse health effects. Next number 4. Biological hazard. Biological hazard includes bacteria, viruses, mold, mildew, insects, and vermin, among others. Then, psychosocial hazard. Psychosocial hazard is the stresses that farmers get from work, family, or even among friends. Next is ergonomic hazard. Ergonomic hazard refers to any physical condition that can be experienced in the workplace due to incorrect body movements that can cause injury or other health concern that may affect musculoskeletal system causing aches and sprains that may appear not too serious at first but may develop into serious health problem which can cause permanent damage to the body. Now let us talk about chemicals and hazardous tools and equipment used for farm work. 1. Spraying chemicals. The use of fertilizers and pesticides are common in farming. These are used to control pests, weeds, and mollusks. Spraying is the most common method of applying chemicals. Farm owners consult local agriculturists for the appropriate chemicals to use in their crops. Number 2. Land preparation using heavy equipment and implements. The use of mechanical equipment for land preparation like tractor might involve risks such as a person being run over by it. The tractor also has the tendency to overturn, especially if it is running too fast. To avoid possible hazard and risks in the farm, personal protective equipment is advised. Safety is the physical environmental condition of work which complies with occupational health safety standards and which allows the farmers to perform the job without or within acceptable exposure to hazards. 
One of the basic requirements to maintain these standards is the provision of PPE. This can reduce the number and severity of farmers related injuries and illnesses. Now let us talk about personal protective equipment for farmers. Number 1. Farm Respiratory Protection. Since farmers use fertilizers and other chemicals, it is necessary for them to use respirators to protect themselves from inhaling mold spores and chemicals. Respirators must be properly selected, worn, and maintained to ensure maximum protection. Number 2. Eye Protection. This is used to protect farmers' eyes from possible flying objects, liquid sprays, or other elements that may enter their eyes. There are several types of eye protectors like goggles and glasses with safety shields, among others. Number 3. Foot protection. A farmer's feet is one of the most exposed parts of the body during work. Wearing appropriate footwear protects the farmer from stepping on sharp objects or animal bites. It can also protect him or her from slipping. Number 4. Hand protection. Farmers use gloves to protect their hands from hazardous elements such as holding chemicals or removing infested crops. Use disposable gloves when dealing with infested crops. Number 5. Head protection. Since farmers are commonly exposed to heat of the sun, it is important for them to wear a hat. This is also necessary to protect their head from slip or fall. Number 6. Body protection. It comes in many forms, depending on the job. Farmers often wear long sleeve clothes and jeans. This is necessary to protect them from harmful elements. Now let us talk about the basic first aid during emergency situation and accidents in the farm. First, shock. 1. Do not give the victim anything to eat or drink. 2. Lay the victim on his or her back but do not move him or her if there is a neck or back injury. 3. Make sure that the victim gets adequate air. 4. Keep the victim warm. 5. Raise the victim's feet and legs with a pillow. 6. If the victim vomits, roll the victim on his or her side and keep the windpipe clear. 2. Bleeding and wounds 1. Place a clean cloth or gauze over the wound. Apply firm, steady pressure for at least 5 minutes. 2. Elevate an injured arm or leg above the level of the victim's heart if possible. 3. When bleeding stops, secure the cloth with a bandage. Do not lift the cloth from the wound to check if the bleeding has stopped. Be sure that the bandage is not too tight. 4. Check the victim for shock. 5. Use tourniquets only when you cannot control the bleeding. 3. Chemical or compressed gas burns. 1. Use a drench hose, emergency shower, or eye wash for at least 15 minutes to rinse away all traces of chemicals while removing any contaminated clothing from the victim. 2. Cover the burn loosely with a clean, dry cloth or special burn dressing. 3. Check the victim for shock. Fourthly, heat or electric burn. 1. Submerge the burned area in cold, clean running water if the skin is not seriously affected. 2. Avoid applying cream or any form of ointment. Fifthly, fainting. 1. Ordinarily, fainting victims immediately regain consciousness after. If this does not happen, the victim should immediately be brought to the emergency room. 2. For the first aid, the victim should be laid down on their back and allow plenty of fresh air. Apply cold compress in the forehead and if the victim vomits, keep the windpipe clear by rolling him to his or her side. Lastly, heat stroke. 1. Heat stroke is life-threatening so this should never be taken for granted. Flush, hot and dry skin, rapid pulse, very minimal perspiration, and unconsciousness are signs of heat stroke. 2. You need to bring the victim to a cooler place and lie him, her on the back with feet up, then loosen clothing and remove footwear. Apply cold compress or wet towel on the forehead, neck, armpit, and extremities to cool the victim. Treat the victim for shock or bring the victim to the nearest hospital. Thank you for watching. We can now proceed to our lesson activity.